Hello everyone, welcome to iCoding Club. My name is Pravin Singh and we, today we are going to talk about the AJAX and XHR call inside Dojo. And we will also see that how Dojo utilize a uh, deferred and promise concept for, the, uh, for their AJAX and XHR implementation. Now deferred and promise is something which need a little bit of theoretical knowledge. Uh, you need to understand how the unsynchronous JavaScript work. What is the fundamental reason why uh, deferred and promise come into picture? This is the article I have written to uh, cover the, the third theoretical part of it. Uh, if you're not comfortable with the theoretical uh, part of deferred promise or the unsynchronous JavaScript, uh, I strongly recommend you to check this article before. After that, it's important to understand what are the APIs pro provided to us by the deferred and prom uh, by Dojo and the deferred promise. There's another article which I already created where I explain the you know all the APIs, how we can reject a promise, how can we uh, fulfill a promise, or how we can check the progress of promise. All those things in this article. So uh, moving before uh, to. Um, uh, to this article it's very important that you understand these two concept and after that yeah this. so um, I assume that you will go to this uh, check this uh, two article so I just move further to follow this article it's very important that you should build the package structure similar to this image so you should have the live inside here uh, the all the dojo libraries and the app folder should contain all the application part of it. As I mentioned in all my previous Dojo uh, uh, articles, Dojo suggests you to run the whole Dojo application inside a server. So we will just follow the uh, guidelines. In the Mac, it's pretty simple. You have to just run uh, the Python script to run it. So I just move to the demo folder. Uh, it's all depend on you where you want to have that folder just run the server in our case it's listening on the uh, four time eight since it's the XHR based article we have to build a server a tiny server there's a different way to build a server you can use a Java code PHP code or something the simplest way is to create a node uh, server what I'm doing in this server is just creating a few routes uh, which will be used in this our application and then there is some handlers. What we'll do just we will copy this whole section. Dump inside the server where we already are. Just I just remove this and put it again. So what it does is just for every URL is just called the handler and one very important thing is before it tried the response it put the one second delay I just put the one second delay to simulate a real world kind of scenario where we get some kind of delay to get the response from the server apart from that this article is pretty simple and easy and easy to follow now let's start building our application so at this state, yeah, let's see that our server is running or not. What I will do, I will move to the another tab where I will already in the server folder. What I will do, I will just run the command node and the server.js, which is the file name, and I will run it. And that's it. Our server is running on the port number 9999. 9 Why not let's try this URL? Is it working or not? slash login dot json and as we expected it's running and just say the custom id one two three four four and probably for my coding club i'll just delete it because it's not needed anymore we are going to do everything here what we're going to do now is we will follow a blog for the rest of the you know things the first thing is that we have to build the basic HTML which will called our widget where we will doing the our you know all our hands-on things I guess I already have that code I just delete everything and just paste it all I'm doing is I'm pulling the test def XHR widget 
taking the instance of it that set which will trigger the constructor call in that widget this thing should be familiar for you uh, should be familiar if this configuration and the require if it is not familiar to you just i suggest to you to look back to my previous article and you will be good to go let's move further and build our widget which is the most important thing here let's start with the simplest thing where we are just going to do a simple xhr call here it is so all i'm doing is i'm pulling the most most of dependency and inside the constructor i'm just doing a one request when this request get resolved it will call the then and it will call the callback why because in dojo requests based out of the deferred or promise apis it just follow the same pattern for the seamless access the way you can work with the plain deferred things as i explained in my previous article same way you can go for the xhr also now what it will do is when this url get resolved that's mean when we get the data from the server it will call the success handler and it will print the greeting as i mentioned in the previous article then to take two arguments first is the the success handler and second argument is the error handler and third optional is actually the progress handler so in this case if everything go fine we should see the greeting message after one second of delay let's see if that work or not so as we waited for around one second and after that we can see that the greeting message is coming which says Pravin from Iconic Club and that's it. Now this was the simplest problem, uh, simplest edge uh, call, uh, which show a little bit of hint that how deferred and promise work. On the very first article where I explained the theoretical part of deferred and promise, that is the link provided here. I actually discuss one problem and we actually discussed the theoretical solution in that time. Before we touch the real uh, real solution in this article, let's re-look on the problem. So what we're trying to build is a, a home page of e-shopping website. First, we'll take the login credential and we will do the server call. If it is successful, on that case, we will show the greeting message to user. And only then, I've mentioned again only then and we are not doing the parallel calls we are doing sequential call I will go on the server and I will get the top products I will display on the main section uh, it could be the Christmas time where we have to get the deals of the day so we will uh, do another server call to get the deals of the day and I will show somewhere in the right side and once everything is done uh maybe we want to check that you know what are the last product purchase from the user the customer and maybe we want to take the feedback from the customer that how you like this is a typical scenario of any uh, e-shopping website could be the amazon.com or could be else again the callback solution it will have the nesting level and in the one callback, we'll call another callback and another callback and so on. It goes so deep. As I mentioned, that it's come with so many problems that it's called the callback hell or the pyramid of doom. And as I mentioned that there's no, uh, you know, the place where we can have the, the error handler kind of like which applicable for all the HX call or something like that. We'll solve all those things by the promise. So in the very first article, we actually touched the theoretical part of it. Now what we'll do, we'll touch the real code of Dojo. So I copy the whole section. And update the our widget class from that. Now what we are doing is as the problem state, as explained in the problem statement, we are get doing the, all the edges call one by one sequentially and then we are printing the message one by one you can see that we are using then for ajax call also and for the normal call also 
So we can mix the, the promise call or the ajax call and the normal call one by one using the then. Then we'll just go in sequence order and it will execute the particular uh, you know statement or the task there. So let's run this thing now and see that how things are working. As I mentioned that one second delay is there, one second done. Then we are showing greeting, then product and deal of the day. And then we are asking the feedback. You can see the weight printing on the law console is doing the one second of delay and it's, everything is happening in the sequential order. That is the beauty of then and the promise. So what next? We're done with the chaining. The another thing we might want to look for that what in the case of error after all the callback was good enough uh, the problem was that we can't have a nice single error handler so let's let's try to simulate a, a 404 error for that it's pretty simple we just modify the url for dot 404 so let's go back to the code if i just do the 404 and run it sure enough is just say that you know there's an error happened and it's break everything but we actually not handled the error properly or we have not tried any handler so what we'll do now is we'll go to this then and we'll provide some kind of error handler let's provide some object which will from which we will get the error and we'll just do the console.log error and we'll print the, the error object. If you run now, we can see that our error is getting executed, error handler, but is also printing the rest of the thing. Not may be suitable for a situation or may not be. On some cases, even the first Ajax call get failed, you might want to do the rest of the Ajax call. But the problem what we are discussing, the shopping website, if authentication fail, I might not want to do the rest of the Ajax call. So what is the solution? The solution is very simple. The way promise and deferred work is, is look for the error handler once you know the deferred or the promise fail or rejected and it will just look on the then chain and keep going keep going till it figure out if there is an error handler if there is no error handler it will just throw the exception but if it is found in the last then it will print that but the trick part is that it will not go back and print the success handler of all the previous then it will start execution from this particular level so if you would have have more than statement, those might get executed. But in this case, it will just avoid all the previous uh, uh, then statement and it'll just go to the, the last one. If I just print, just run the whole code now, you can see that all the rest of the statement is gone. All we have is the single error handler as, and the statement what we are printing in that. This is the way it works. You know, you can short circuit the complete uh, error scenario and go handy on some situations. The one more thing which I want to explain now is a utility provider from the dojo, which is different from the deferred and promise, which is the standard public open API. When is provided from the dojo, the beauty of when is it let you play with the, with the Ajax call, you know, with the synchronous call and unsynchronous call seamlessly. So if a particular method provide you an object or the promise when work in both the scenario. Now I created one example to explain the beauty of it. Let's first copy this and then we will talk about it. Let's update it. So this is a typical scenario where I'm caching the gritting thing. What do you mean with caching? So let's, you know, if you're doing a server call and in the kind of greeting message, uh, if you're done with the one call, right? And if you can 
cache that object on the client side as a simple JavaScript object. There is no need to do that call again and again to the server. So let's say this particular method greeting cache cache look for the one uh, one object property we say greeting promise. If it find null, it go and do the server call, and I'm saying that the cache is mess. But when we come to the greeting cache next time, it see that you know greeting promise is already there. We have data in that. Then it will not do the just call and we will save one HTTP call and we'll just return the whole data. To simulate this, what I have done is I provided a one, one when statement which do the server, you know, uh, greeting cache call. And after the five second, I'm again doing the same call to just show uh, that, you know, one case we uh, get the cache miss and in other ca case we get the cache hit. Let's try this on the browser. If I run again, it just say the cache MS, one second delay, it print the greeting message, but the after five second, it says that cache hit. So next time, there's no server call this time. So this is the advantage of when and it's get handy. And most of the time, when you're working with the Dojo code, you actually end up using when only because the syntax wise it clear and it work good with the array and then and then end with the promise. So this is all I wanted to cover in this uh, article. So if you like the article, like the video, click on the like button on YouTube and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.